To continue this discussion on the Iranian elections, I'm now joined from New York by Iranian-American journalist and commentator Negar Mortazavi, who's been following these results closely. Uh, Negar, thanks for joining me on Upfront. Are we getting too excited thanks for having by me. these election results in Iran? Do they really matter that much? Uh, as Nafisi was suggesting, that it may not be uh, the great opening we want it to be. I think the Iranian people are pretty excited, but we shouldn't forget that this is not the super liberal or the top of the reformist movement even within the Iranian political structure that won. Many of the prominent reformist candidates were disqualified by the Guardian Council before the election, so they had to pull up a coalition of moderates, of reformists, even some conservatives who are closer to the center to be able to pull this off. But th at the end of the day, uh, the way people see it is that the reformists were able to win with tied hands, and I think that's a very big win for them. You say big win. Ultimately, the critics would say Iran isn't a democracy. It's a theocracy with a supreme leader uh, who gets the final say over everything that matters, hence the name supreme leader. Uh, so it's a mistake for outsiders to spend so much time poring over these election results for a parliament which doesn't have much power. I actually don't see it as that black and white. At the end of the day, the assembly of experts that the Iranians voted for, technically on paper, according to the Constitution, is the body that is supposed to appoint and even oversee um, the supreme leader, as you may, or the leader of Iran. Um, on foreign policy, for example, where Iran uh, often is in the news headlines globally, it's been heavily criticized for things like supporting Bashar al-Assad in Syria. These elections aren't going to change any of that, are they? Let's not forget the role of the previous parliament, which was dominated by the conservatives or the hardliners, in causing all kinds of hiccups to the foreign policy um, path that President Rouhani has taken throughout his negotiations uh, with the world powers, throughout um, his, his process of making the nuclear deal. The parliament was able to um, cause basically a lot of what I call hiccups. They couldn't sabotage the entire deal, but they just made it very difficult for the administration to go on. I think the nuclear deal was the major gain of President Rouhani. It was um, one of his main promises of his election campaign, and he was able to deliver, which was something that people were looking forward to. It wasn't just a nuclear deal. It means the lifting of sanctions. It means an economic uh, boost for, for Iran, uh, which has a staggering economy. There's a high unemployment rate. So that was something that the majority of the population was looking forward, and the president was able to deliver. So the parliament, his coalition or his allies, in the parliament also ran um, on that platform and that definitely gave them um, a lot of power to win the electorate. So can this new parliament uh, improve the human rights situation on the ground inside of Iran even under President Rouhani who is uh, deemed to be a pragmatist, a moderate, the guy who did the nuclear deal uh, under his presidency in 2015 I believe the number of executions in Iran went up not down. Definitely. So the human rights situation, especially when it comes to executions, the political prisoners, like I said, the house arrest of top leaders of the opposition, that's something that the president hasn't been able uh, to really tackle. Again, let's not forget that the judiciary, the court system, the prison system, that's something that's still being dominated by the hardliners. This um, parliament will not be able to change much of that because they don't have too much power over the judiciary. But again, the, the parliament and the administration are two important pillars of power. So if both sides are in the hands of the moderates, at least um, they, they can be able to work together and form a coalition and there will be a stronger um, power against the hardliners or the judiciary system. But um, still, I think that will be a slow process. Negar Mortazavi, we'll have to leave it there. Thanks for joining me on Upfront. That's our show. Upfront will be back next week.